Hey guys, welcome back. We're going to go through two more modules today um, that have to do with hybrids and electric cars and how they are charged. So we're talking more along the Tesla line here. So we'll get started. If you go to content right here, uh, go down to Fundamentals eLearning, and then you should see a new folder down here called Day 12. And we're going to do the first one, and then we'll go ahead and just go straight into the second one. So this one's on um, HV or high voltage charging. Um, and we'll hit start. So as you can see from the picture here, one of the unique things about um, electric vehicles like Tesla is they do have to get charged. So you're going to have to install a charging station along this line, and then the car is going to have to be parked um, close enough to be able to connect it up. These are becoming real common. A lot of malls have them now. A lot of parking garages have these charging stations. Um, even hospitals and things of that nature are putting in charging stations. So it is uh, fairly common at this point. So let me read this. Um, it says, introduction, the high voltage or HV battery in an electric or plug-in hybrid vehicle can be charged externally by connecting the vehicle to the electrical power grid. A charger controls the current and voltage supplied to the HV battery pack. The charger can be either inside the vehicle or outside the vehicle or inside the charging station. If the charger is in the vehicle, it is called an onboard charging system. If the charger is outside the vehicle, then it's called an offboard charging system. Uh, which type, which vehicle types can be charged externally? Um, so we are talking about electric vehicles, plug-in hybrids, but not full hybrid. So it has to be either a pure electric one or a hybrid that is capable of being plugged in. A lot of them just recharge themselves as they drive. And we'll go to the second one. How can an electric vehicle be charged? And it's going to be by connecting it to the power grid. So unlike your cell phone, you're not going to be able to plug it into a USB and charge it up with your little uh, external battery pack that you guys like to charge your phones with. Um, it's going to have to actually go to the power grid via charging station and cable connection. And we'll go to the third one. Find the charging cable connector on the vehicle. And in this case right here, it kind of looks like a gas cap. And we'll go to the fourth one. So this is the charging station here. And it says, what is the difference between them? Um, so this one is going to be an off-board charging station, and this one's going to be an on-board charging station where the circuitry and to charge it's located on the car. This one is going to have it um, built into the system here. So um, with off-board charging system, the charger is located inside the charging station. That's going to be true. Um, with an off-board charging system, the correct voltage and current is controlled from outside the vehicle. That's also true. So this is doing all the controlling right here. And some else I'll point out, a lot of times right here they'll have a credit card slot. So you just swipe your credit card if it's at a um, public place, and then you can it'll unlock this, and then you can plug it into your car. With an onboard charging system, the charger is inside the vehicle. And that's going to be this one. That's also true. With an onboard charging system, the correct voltage and current is controlled from outside the vehicle. That's going to be false. It's actually the vehicle that controls that. And you can see right here, they got the little sign for where you would swipe your credit card. Number five, find the correct charging station. So offboard, meaning the controlling aspect of it is controlled by the, by the charger, is going to be this one. So this is offboard. And then onboard is going to be this one. Um, you would also have to have your own cable for this one to plug into that spot there. Number six. This is a plug-in hybrid vehicle with an onboard charging system. Find the charger. So the charger is going to be up here, this part. And then we'll go to number seven. Um, this is a plug-in hybrid vehicle with an off-board charging system. Is there a charger in the vehicle? Well, because it's off-board, then the answer is going to be no. There's going to be a need for a charger. And it is built into the charging station. That's the other aspect of this. 
So that's it, a really simple lesson, but as a lot of electric vehicles are becoming more and more common, um, I wanted to go through this with you and let you see what the different types are. Um, something else I'll also point out here, you can see how the wires connect. There's the side of the car, just like the gas tank uh, or the uh, gas door would be over here. Instead, we got the charging spot, and then you got the wires coming in, going down to the battery pack. All right. All right, in this video, we're going to go through and we are going to talk about some of the different charging modes that they use on electric vehicles and hybrid vehicles. So on the left side, we'll go down to Fundamentals e-learning, go down to Day 12, and then you'll see HV charging modes. So in this setup here, you're going to see the charging post or charging station. You're going to see the cord that gets plugged into the car, and then back of the car where the cord reaches there. So let's get into a little bit more, some more details on how this all works. So the vehicle can be connected up to a charging station in different modes. Mode one, a vehicle is directly connected to the main power grid. The only protection is a fuse. Mode two, there is an interface in the cable, which means a setting can be chosen regarding the maximum charging currents. Mode three, the charging station is connected to the grid permanently. The charging station is turned on to the main power grid. And then uh, mode four is going to be direct current charging, fast charging. With special connectors and charging stations, fast extra fast charging is possible. So depending on what your need is, depending on how you use your car, you've got a few different options for how it gets charged up. So in the picture here, they're showing a mode one charging station. How is the vehicle connected to the power grid? Well, for mode one, it says a vehicle is directly connected to the main power grid. So the vehicle is connected directly to the main power grid. So we're looking at this one right here. And we'll go to number two. Now they added something here. We got this piece. And they say this is a mode two charging station. How is this vehicle connected to the power grid? Well, for mode two, there's an interface in the cable, which means settings can be chosen. So there's an interface in the cable that links it to the power grid. And that's going to be the one that we choose. And we'll go to number three. Click on the device that provides the link between the power grid and the vehicle. What they're referring to is the cable right here. So click along the cable. And we'll go to number four. This is the cable interface. Um, what can be selected through this device? Well, as we look at this, what we're seeing are different charging amperages. So you got a slow charger, a slow charge rate, or you got a higher charge rate, just depending on how much time you have and well, um, how much your battery needs to be charged. So they are talking about the maximum currents. So if you think about your cell phones, if you're trying to charge off a laptop, it might take a long time. If you have one of the stronger chargers, it's going to charge your cell phone faster. It's kind of similar to what this is doing. We'll go to number five. What is the advantage of being able to adjust the maximum current prior to charging? Um, what this is going to do is match the charging current to the load capacity of the system the vehicle is connected to or to match the charging current to the vehicle battery. It's gonna be it's gonna to be to match the charging current to the load capacity of the system the vehicle is connected to. And we'll go to number six. In which situations is it useful to significantly reduce the maximum current? <clears throat> um, if the maximum current ability of the power source is very low, that's going to be true. Um, a lot of houses are at 15 amps, not 16. So if you're plugged into a residential circuit, it's not going to be able to charge at 16 amps. Also, if that circuit on the house has a lot of other things plugged into it, you might have to step it down even further depending on what the power availability is. Um, next one says, if multiple devices are already connected to the same power circuit, you also want to charge the vehicle without exceeding the load capacity of the power source. So that's going to be true also. 
if two vehicles are charged from the same power source, the current going to each vehicle can be reduced so as not to exceed the low capacity. So that's also true. So it's gonna be all of these. So if you have multiple cars plugged in, you could set it down at five amps because if one car is five, the second car is five, well now you're up to 10. And if you have other things at your house plugged into it, that might bring you up to 15. If you go above 15, you might pop the circuit breaker on the house. So that's why it's nice to be able to control how fast you are charging it. We'll go to number seven. This is a mode three charging station. <clears throat> and is there an interface in the cable? Well, if we look at this, no, there's not an interface in the cable. And it's done with a onboard charger. So it's all taken care of inside of the vehicle here. We'll go to number eight. What can be adjusted or set on a mode three charging station? If we look up here, it says it's connected to the power grid permanently. The charging station is turned on to the main power grid. So what can we control? Well, because there's nothing here, we can't control anything. So it's all determined by the charging station at this point. And now we'll go to number nine. How is the vehicle connected to the power grid? Um, it says it is connected to the power grid permanently. Um, charging station is turned to the, is, uh, is turned to the main power grid. Um, it's done permanently. So we'll go with the middle one here. And now we'll go to number 10. What is the advantage in having the charging station permanently connected to the grid? Um, it's gonna be this one. The maximum current can be set high because the charging station is adjusted to the load capacity of the grid. We'll go to number 11. And now we've got a mode four charging station. The station is bigger than previous ones because the charger is incorporated into the charging station. Um, what is the name for this type of charger? This is going to be a offboard charger because all the controlling takes place inside of here. That's gonna be called the offboard. And we'll go to number 12. What can be said about the cable that is used to charge? As you notice, it's a lot thicker because it's a heavier duty setup. So it's gonna be a thicker cable than previous ones. And now we'll go to 12, I'm sorry, 13. What can be said about the current if a thicker cable is used? Um, the thicker the cable, the more power you can send through it. So it can be higher so they can charge it faster. Now we'll go to 14. What happens to the charge time if the current is higher? Well, just like filling up your gas tank, the thicker the hose, the bigger the hose, the more gas can go through it. Same thing with electricity. So the bigger the power cord, the more electricity we can put into it. It is going to decrease the charging time. So it's gonna charge it up faster. All right, we're going to 15 right here. It says you need to provide four consecutive correct answers. Which charging mode is this? Because we got the controller built in right here. This one is going to be a mode two. This one is going to be a mode three because it's connected permanently. This one has the big station set up, so that's gonna be a mode four. And then this is gonna be a mode one where it's directly connected to the power grid. All right, now we'll go on to our last one here and finish things up. So at this point we're done. So there's a lot of different options for plugging in an electric vehicle and now you know a little bit more about what each one of those does. Thanks for getting this done.